my name is Sergio Pereira. I'm from Lisbon, Portugal. I spent my time on the road consulting and developing awesome projects for corporate clients and ICOs and startups uh, all over the world. Uh, mostly nowadays related to blockchain and distributed ledger technologies in some way. So blockchain's biggest unique selling proposition compared to other technologies is resolving trust issues between parties. So blockchain should be a, as much of a killer case uh, the biggest the trust issues are in the market already. So that's a spectrum. So companies creating blockchain initiatives themselves internally, it's good and they use it as a test bed. But that's certainly not the killer use cases for blockchain that we that we see. So at TechHQ, for example, my company, we are focusing mostly in consortiums, supply chain consortiums, um, consortiums even across uh, competitors coming together for some higher good between themselves or for cost cutting in this trustless uh, environment. So I would say if we go from a timeline, I would say in the next two, three years, this will be the, the most promising usage for blockchain is getting plugged in existing value chains in a way that it doesn't disrupt them, but it helps them becoming more efficient in a way that the parties collaborate with each other. So supply chains is certainly the, the biggest use case for me in the short term, two, three years. Further down the line, there will be use cases where blockchain is used to totally disrupt industries, industries that are heavily intermediated, uh, even monopolized by certain parties, uh, industries where uh, the market is too fragmented across geos and interoperability is not a thing because each of those market participants has kind of walled gardens that they don't have incentives to collaborate with each other. This creates huge uh, trust issues um, already. So I think for the future, this will be a thing. And I would even go broader in, in the way I pose it. People have very few basic needs. So for instance, one is communicate with each other. That's why smartphones and social networks grow like wildfire in adoption. Another very basic need is to know the truth. I want to know the truth as a human being. Now, as I look at the data monopolies, Google, Facebook, uh, whatever, the only thing I know is the, they manage what I perceive as truth. And this is truth not just for the big ones, but for the retailer I go to. And the incentives are typically contrary to, to give out the truth. So what is going to happen as it happens with smartphones and social networks that totally changed the way people perceive communication? Because before there were telephones like Nokia, the old ones. That's where people perceived as communication. I can call you anywhere. How cool is that? Now it's a step forward. I can message you, I can send you pictures, videos, I can do whatever. Now, with trust is just the same. I think blockchain's bigger and, and really killer use case will be disrupting the people's perception of trust. This will manifest uh, with new business cases that we might not know as of today new business models based off new trust levels. I think data, for example, data marketplaces, which, I mean, sensitive data. Uh, now I share it with Google because Google exchanged value back to me, but I'm not too comfortable with that because it's still a data monopoly. They can do whatever they want. So, I, you know, I don't have a bearer level of trust, so I need to agree to do that with the data monopoly. Blockchain is gonna change this. It's certainly a timeline that will evolve over time. The adoption of blockchain across sectors, industries, stakeholders. So what we see now, as of really now, is internal initiatives. Com big companies rolling out internal, from proof of concept initiatives to project management, procurement, internal efficiency things. So, Process approval and budget depends on one entity, so it's easy. You might argue trust issues are not really there, but 
that's okay if they want to pursue it. So those initiatives are the low hanging fruit in the blockchain world and they get done now in like one, two years. Right after that, my take, and that's our proposed approach at Tech HQ, as we consult our clients, is in two to five years, it will be supply chains and other mo modes of consortium, even across competitors in some way. So that brings efficiency to, to industries that has a, enough of an upper side to, for them to, to actually allocate budget and resources to it. Uh, but it doesn't have too much risk, so you're not disrupting industries. You are just leveraging the existing value chains and the existing interactions between parties interdependent on each other to, to create new ways of connecting and, and to create efficiencies for that. It's not disruption, it's just innovation. Now, the big, big audacious goals for blockchain, I would say they are past the five-year mark probably more towards the 10 year mark. Maybe we'll have a killer use case coming in before that, but for adoption, it needs to be a whole new use case, something that is not depending on the existing lobbies and market barriers from big companies and data monopolies. That stuff can, can exist, and I, I mean, if I'm lucky enough to be the one guy that comes up with that idea, I will be very well off, but even if I'm not, I'll be happy for that disruption to happen in the world. But I would say that existing markets, value chains, to be totally moved to blockchain will entail the existing market participants who are very you know, big companies with big power to disappear or diminish their presence quite significantly. So that's a huge barrier. I think that would go past the five-year mark, probably even past the 10-year mark in some So at TechHQ we are working with uh, several different projects from small startups and ICOs to, to big corporations, uh, clients such as Porsche, BMW, uh, some other big names that uh, we can't disclose and also some new initiatives uh, around new, new topics in finance, in electric cars, logistics. Um, and some, some cool stuff. So I can, for example, tell you about a project we are developing uh, in the light of why our consortium is important and, and how blockchain can unfold critical disruption in, say, three to five years. We are developing a product in joint effort with a big logistics company for uh, reducing the waste associated with, with the trade of, of goods in containers. So imagine you are a big car OEM and I'm a big pharmaceutical company. We don't know each other, we don't have to, we work in different industries, but you need to ship your stuff from Europe to the US and you buy containers and containers stay there because you have nothing to, to trade back. And I'm an American company and I trade my stuff from the US to Europe and my containers get there and the whole industry loses 15% every year on just wasted container allocation. So now imagine that they could collaborate and reuse all this waste. Uh, it would be obviously good for the environment, but it would be serious business for them in terms of money they can save and, and the whole industry working more efficiently. Now why, they, why don't they do it? Because, you know, different companies will not collaborate with each other. They are competitors most of the time. So they cannot exchange the, the business logic underlying what they are trading from place A to place B. Now what we are building at TechHQ is a protocol for them to have a way to collaborate over this. A protocol where data from those logistics uh, management uh, systems from each different party involved get uh, written to our blockchain solution. Uh, obviously, they are heavily encrypted, um, but still they can be operated in a way uh, that we can then communicate to the logistics partner that we have that these containers can be repurposed for different parties. So we are reducing a lot the, the costs with logistics for these players while reducing a lot the carbon and, and the waste footprint that the industry as a whole creates for the world. So I'm very proud of, with this project. It's still kind of 
Um, not very public state, we are in the development, but we will certainly make a killing out of it. Well, in a sense, corporate money is taking the show right now for several reasons that, that coincide in the same point in time. So, at one point, the crowd got burned last year, or rather earlier this year, so the crowd is now out, uh, watching the, the crypto game from the sidelines, and the institutional money that got budgets approved is now coming in. So, they are kind of st stealing the show, in one sense, but it's, it's just the time we are at right now. So at a certain time, the crowd will come in again uh, with much more smart money, I hope. Uh, the institutional money that comes in right now with a lot of proof of concept, just tipping their toes, will evolve into more mature and, and production level initiatives and products. So I think the space as a whole uh, is maturing. Uh, I think the space, the, the point in time we are at right now is, is, is very normal, I would say. First there was this big hype, the crowd got burned, so now the crowd is now kind of in waiting mode. Uh, corporates were waiting in the sidelines and now they are coming in, but in a very kind of defensive uh, MO. Uh, in, a, in, in down the line, in let's say six months, one year, two years, they will coincide more mature, each of them, and the space will now go for production level uh, initiatives, production level products, and products that can actually be the killer apps for blockchain beyond uh, cryptocurrency, beyond ICOs. You know, the space demands for that, for legitimacy as a whole, either from the crowd or from corporates, regardless. Yeah, I certainly don't have a magic wand or, or I don't think anyone has. Uh, there is still a lot of, there are less scams nowadays, but there is a lot of people just figuring it out. And, and you can tell most projects will not go places, but you can also tell that some projects can go places. So this is, I would say, like analyzing typical startups before this blockchain craze. Most startups will end up failing, and you know that for a fact. I've, I've been an entrepreneur myself for a while, so I know how to tell people who are just figuring out from people who have already the scars in them and they they burned a few times and, and now they, they know their shit a little bit better. And in the crypto world, I think the, the marketplace was lacking people who got burned, you know, in the sense of having their projects failed or experiencing being immature for a while because those scars bring maturity and bring uh, a lot more knowledge about what it takes to, to, to make projects success. So I got lucky enough to experience uh, a lot of time in startup world, projects that failed, projects that had success, everything in between. And now in the crypto world, I got to, to hang out with a lot of people and, and participate in projects that failed to some extent, projects that had success to some extent, uh, either in the crowd space, either in the corporate space. So it's not a magic one thing, it's just an experience thing. You got to see if the people leading the project have a concise, uh, unique selling proposition, if they have a concise uh, and credible go-to-market strategy. Because a year ago, all blockchain ICOs I mean, they were too futuristic. They had, I mean, if, even if they raised 100 or 200 million dollars, they would burn all that cash before ever making it to, to, to market. And, and I mean, it was a bubble for sure. There was no due diligence because any due diligence would ask, hey, how will you go to market with this? How will you go past this and this and this barrier to adoption? So now projects are more mature. So the, the, the whole space is getting more mature in a way that the projects like the one year ago ones don't get funded, that's it. So from all the others, uh, corporates coming to play give projects, they back uh, instant market adoption in a way. Of course, it comes with a lot of strings attached, but that's another conversation. Uh, and, and people have a whole 
new maturity to them. They failed already, they tried things already, they worked in a different places already. So my take is I worked in projects different enough with different levels of success enough. I can tell if, if a project is going to succeed or not before working with them. Well, a word of advice for the blockchain enthusiast who wants to get in but doesn't know how. So, as a matter of fact, I get a lot of people approaching me, either developers who want to learn the tools or business people who want to be able to sell or to talk about it. Uh, I, I deliver a lot of workshops in corporates for both cases, actually. Uh, I'm launching some initiatives with schools, both for code and for business people, like blockchain MBA kind of things. So, my word of advice is the knowledge is out there. I mean, I do it professionally, I deliver these kind of contents for people who pay me to do it. But as a matter of fact, content is out there. You can explore, you can talk to people. The community is not that big yet. You can easily approach most people who matter in the space. So just get out, allocate a few hours of your day each day, build some consistency and discipline to learn, and just learn the right things. And drop me a line any day. Uh, to, to guide you through it because I do it a lot for, for people also and I do it, I mean, I'm happy to do it anytime. <laughs>